Nicholas Montez here, and I know you're thinking, why am I posting a video in the middle of the week? I mean, I know tomorrow's Friday, but still, why am I posting a video during a school day? Well, here's the reason why. Um, I kind of, I, I wanted to make this video because I wanted to start a series where it, called uh, Celebration of Cinema, where basically I talk, it's a series of videos where every movie that comes out that has an anniversary of a movie that comes out, uh, like a five-year anniversary or something like that, I review it, and that movie had, but the movie has to be a movie I absolutely love, and basically, the, it's, these reviews are different from my normal movie reviews, and basically film, and basically picking five things I love about that film, except for this video, we're, re we're reviewing two movies, and talking about the five things I love in all two of these movies, and uh, today, I know technically today is the anniversary, the five-year anniversary of Infinity War. Yesterday was Endgame's anniversary, but Infinity War is the better movie, in my opinion. If you don't know my top five favorite movies list, it's Avengers Infinity War, number one, Endgame, number two, three, Lion King, two, Nemo, and number five, Spider-Verse. And basically, I, wanted, I thought to start this series, I wanted to explain my reasoning because it's the anniversary of Infinity War. I wanted to come on here and talk about the things I love about these two films so much and really why I put these movies more than everything else and why they're better than everything else for me. So we're going to get through this and we're going to start off with the first category and that is the story slash directors. To, I include the Russo Brothers in the story section of this video because the Russo Brothers are kind of a big part of what made this movie happen. I mean, I loved what they did with the sequels of Captain America, the, the, especially Civil War, which I might do, just do a review next Saturday for that film since it's gonna be like, what? It's six, seven year anniversary, I think. Um, and then even with these two films, they do great, but even then, um, the other films that they've made after this, you know, Cherry, I haven't seen it. Gray Man, I have seen it. Pretty good. Not as good as these films, obviously. Uh, and then the fact that they're also, like, being directed to direct the, the new Batman movie for James Gunn's DC Universe. That's interesting. Um, so, uh, these directors, th these are probably my favorite directors of the MCU. Because they have told these impossible stories and they could do great lengths with tone, humor, and all that stuff. And they handled it really well with this movie, with these movies. So when it comes to like Infinity War, I thought the way they handled that story, because the big part of what made Infinity War so special is that it was more of a question as to how do you include a movie where you have the Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Black Panther characters, Doctor Strange, and Spider-Man all in one movie together and the answer is, and, and how, do you, how does it all make sense? And it's not confusing and, the, and it's all great. And the big answer to that is, it's because everything up to this point in time was established. We're only talking about Infinity War right here. We'll get into Endgame in a little bit, but it's because everything was established. The characters already established. The, wor the, the worlds that we go to, New York, Wakanda, Nowhere, Xandar. Well, we don't go to Xandar, but it's off screen. Uh, there's only one place that we that we're introduced to, which is Vormir. But that's for us. That's for a whole different thing of excellency. Um, but yeah, like everything makes sense in all the storylines, and even though you have a lot of characters, you understand where all these characters are coming from. And so it's like, and the way that it connects the whole MCU storyline together, from 
literally starting off from the scene with Thor Ragnarok at the end of Thor Ragnarok, then going down to New York where you get Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and Iron Man getting pulled into the story. Then you get Guardians going to save Thor. Then you get to Scotland where you see Wanda and Vision and then Captain America, Falcon and Black Widow, they get pulled into the story. Then you get Black on War Machine back at the Avengers compound. Then you get um, the Black Panther characters out Wakanda. Like it, it does a great job of of continuing some of these character storylines and seeing them in their day daily day to day lives, but also bringing them into the story in a very impactful way. And you know that since we're on story here, let's kind of talk about it. The stories and with Endgame, I feel like. It told a much better story of grief, and they actually had simplistic arcs for the characters that we've spent with for many years. Um, and especially the stuff that they did with, um, well, actually, we'll talk about characters in a little bit. But, you know, with the stories of these films, actually, I, I, I probably have to say the story of Endgame is probably better than Infinity War. It just works a lot better when you really explain it and you're really exploring it. Infinity War, not really as much. But it, I like the way it's it's played out in certain scenes. But when it comes to the actual plot, when you're explaining it, it just sounds dumb. The stuff that happens is much more interesting than the actual plot itself. So I think what makes the movie really interesting is really just the characters. And there's a lot of characters in this movie, especially with Infinity War. Where it's like, when you look at Infinity War, it's like... A lot of people could say it's like an Iron Man movie. A lot of people could say it's like a Doctor Strange movie because of the importance of Time Stone. A lot of people could say it's a Star Lord movie because of what happens. A lot of people could say it's a Thor movie because of the epic journey that he goes on from going to from losing his family to getting that axe and then failing in the end. A lot of people, and then of course it could be a Gamora film because of how stu of how much depth we get with her. A lot of people could say it's all those things. But if I, honestly, I don't think it's really a certain character's film. I don't even think it's an Avengers movie. I would say it's an event and a movie where all the characters have to unite together and Thanos is the main threat of this. That's how I look at it. But let's talk about it. So, you know, you have Tony Stark. He's probably the most important character. You know, he shot a nuke through space through a wormhole. So he's obviously the most important character. Uh, Doctor Strange obviously is important because he has one of the stones, but he also is this sorcerer, very powerful, and he can see through time and all the realities where we lose or win. Uh, Thor, I would probably say, is the best character of the film because he really goes on this epic journey. And even though he fails at the end, you still love him. And the acting from Chris Hemsworth was absolutely amazing. Um, and then all, another character I absolutely loved, Gamora. I love the way ex we explored her. In the first Guardians, you know, we see stuff. Of, we learn more stuff. We learn stuff about her, of her being this ad adopted descendant of Thanos. We already knew that. But we never really got to see anything, and in this film, we get to see her backstory. We get to see everything, and honestly, th this made me love her character so much more. And but what makes it even more important is she, she it reveals where the she reveals where the Soul Stone was, as she knew all this time. And even with Star Lord, I love her relationship with Star Lord, which we'll get into a little bit, as. She wants Star Lord to kill her because if, if she, if the entire universe will be at stake if she doesn't die. So she has to die in order to save the universe. So I thought that was a great arc. And um, speaking of relationships, I just talked about that. That's another great part about this movie. Certain relationships really worked for me. And honestly, the 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 top four relationships I would say I thought were great were the Iron Man, and Doctor Strange, which were two meanings. Uh, and even though they had some great chemistry together, they also just had this great arc together. Uh, another one, Thor and Rocket. I thought that, that I thought easily that was the best one, where it's like the talk on that ship, where he was like, "What what more can I lose?" I'm like, "Oh, gut wrenching." And then Rocket says, "Me personally, I can lose a lot," and he does, and it's just gut wrenching when you see it. Um. And then the other relationships I loved, you know, Star Lord and Gamora, easily loved their relationship more in this film. Uh, Wand and Vision, I thought, was more well executed, especially in the way that the, the, the uh, situation that they're in of trying to save the universe. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and I guess you could say the next part about this film is, 
I guess we could, now let's talk about Endgame for a minute, because I'm just talking about more about Infinity War than Endgame, because Infinity War has a lot of great stuff. Endgame still has great, a lot of great stuff, but we'll talk about it now. Um, I thought, you know, we see the characters mostly from Infinity War that that survived, but most of those characters, but most there are some characters that they do bring in, like Captain Marvel and Hawkeye and Ant-Man, finally in this film, and I thought they used them in very great lengths, where... You, you know, you have Hawkeye, he was on house arrest, and now that his family is dead, he goes on this murderous rampage across the entire world. And it's a very interesting story, and especially when you get into a certain sequence later in the film, when they go to the time travel sequence, it brings a lot of emotions. And then you bring in Ant-Man, he's more for the comedic relief, but he brings in a great story of doing the time travel stuff. Thought well, that was great. Captain Marvel was kind of the easily wasted character of the whole film. She was great for action, but not great for a story. Um, and then, and of course, you know, when it c comes to the actual other characters of the film that really mattered, um, I thought the endings of Thor and Cap, of Iron Man and Cap, I thought were great. Um, all that stuff was great. And then really just, uh, just the, the way that you, that, that you feel for these characters. Where we spent with these characters for almost 11 and 10 years, and... So when we, they die at the end, even though you know a Black Panther 2 is coming, a Spider-Man 2 is coming, we still care for these characters, and when they die, we still cried. When Spider-Man died, we still cried, but then when they came back in Endgame, we cheered, we, 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 we cheered with triumph, it was amazing, and we, that's how much we cared about these characters. Even characters like, the, the, like Star-Lord and Mantis, we still cared for them because they're, they're still likable characters. We, we still liked them. And so, I just thought it was just, that was a great part. Uh, and now let's talk about, I think that I'm going to close out on this sequence of the film, the Vormir sequences. So in the film, um, we know where all the other Infinity Stones are. We know where all, we know where the Power Stone is from Xandar and Guardians of the Galaxy. We, we know where the Tesseract is with uh, Loki on Asgard. We know where the Reality Stone was, which was on on Nowhere, uh, in, in Thor The Dark World. We know where the Time and Mind Stones were, which were with Doctor Strange and Vision. But, uh, we didn't know where the Soul Stone was this whole time. And that was a lot of questions and theories going into this movie, and in Infinity War, being like, Oh, Black Panther has it, that's why Wakanda is in here. Oh, Handel has it, because he his eyes are, are, are orange. No, that's not what it is. It's Vormir, but what makes it interesting is that it reveals certain character elements as you bring back Red Skull from First Avenger, as he this is the place where he was the guardian of the Soul Stone since 1945, since he got banished with the Tesseract. But what I thought with this did this great and the, the Infinity War scene I'll talk more about in the then in the third part I want to talk about. But the Infinity War sequence, but, but the Endgame sequence with Black Widow and Hawkeye, when you think about them going to get the stones, and you think about the Vormir sequence, I'm like, wait, one of these characters is going to have to die. And it creates a lot of development for these characters, and I thought it was just really well done. And so, and then of course, I think the last thing we're going to talk about here, the action. All the action is great. Infinity War does a little bit better with the action, but with the with Endgame, it may be a little weak on action, but the action in all this, these two movies are absolutely fantastic. They're big, they're massive, and they're amazing. All right, so now we're going to talk about the next part, which is scores. Now, for me, I would say, you know, the Avengers score for the movies, it's usually... The most iconic score in most movies. Um, da, 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 da. I mean, it's the most recognizable score out there. Um, and in the way that the score in these two movies are done, they're done explicitly well, and I love it for that. And <clears throat> especially when you get like the. Like, especially when you get to the Thor in arriving in Wakanda sequence. Easily one of the most crowd-pleasing moments. And you get chills when you hear it. And then 
Alan Silvestri easily stole it when you did the portal sequence in Endgame. Oh, it it did so well. As it started like this moment of like, like relief that these characters are coming back and then you get the triumph score. It's just amazing. Alan Silvestri, you are the king. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to talk too much about this because it's score. Um, and you can just talk a little bit of how good it is. So I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it is a great part of what makes movies, but music and scores are what makes movies pretty great. All right, now, um, Thanos, I'm going to include the Black Order in here a little bit because I think they actually have some interesting aspects. Matter of fact, let's talk about the Black Order for a minute since they're easy to get, to get through. But I thought the Black Order of Thanos' henchmen, I thought they were probably because, you know, when you look at the henchmen that Thanos has had over the years, you know, we it was first Loki when he got sent to Earth and used the Chitauri for the army to attack Earth. Then you used Ronin and Nebula and a little bit of Gamora and Korath. And then you see these, and these are actual henchmen that aren't just killed off. They stay throughout the movie until the end, and they're awesome. Probably my favorite characters, Ebony Ma and Proxima Midnight, easily the most badass characters of the entire film. Um, and then of course, you know, Corvus Glaive and Cole Obsidian. They're good. I, I especially love them in the action sequences they were featured in. Definitely awesome characters. Um, but yeah, the Black Order was great, but Thanos, oh, Thanos is a great villain, you know, then Marvel kind of has a problem with most of their villains. I've never met, I've never seen a villain on screen before, unlike Killmonger or Vulture or Hela or Zemo or really even some of the recent, more recent ones like the Mandarin, Green Goblin from No Way Home, Namor, all these fantastic, or even Kang for that matter, all these fantastic villains. But with Thanos, he is easily the most menacing villain. And what makes him interesting is that he doesn't just kill people because he's um, an, a, a, just a mass murderer. No, he kills people because he has a reason for it. He, he kills people f for the for the certain sacrifice he's doing. And I thought it was interesting for that. But even in the story that they created, and one of the unique things about certain Marvel villains that makes them great is they have this ideology in their head that what they're doing they think is right you look at killmonger what he thinks what he's doing in selling vibranium across the entire world he thinks that's right because people deserve power people deserve people like that look like us they deserve that that stuff too and they need they need help as much as we do with thanos he saw a world where half the population was not eating they were not doing good and so if you kill half those people, everything will be equal and perfectly balanced. And especially when you do in the fla Gamora flashback, when she, when he kills Gamora's pe rape, half of her people, it's explicitly well done. It's clearly thought out. And especially when you get into the Vormir sequence, which why I want to talk about in this sequence, is that when you get into this sequence, it's extremely emotional because it reveals a more... Uh, a deeper side to Thanos where not saying you feel bad for him but you feel this sort of thing where you kind of sympathize with, it, with him where it's like the hardest choices require like he said to Doctor Strange the hardest choices require the strongest wills basically meaning that he has the strongest will to get what he wants to do what he needs to do and that is just powerful storytelling when it comes to this character. And and, and I also, I need I forgot to mention the performance of Josh Brolin. The way Josh Brolin performed this character and the motion capture of this character was absolutely well done. I mean, you, you thought Andy Serkis as Caesar was great? Look at Th uh, Josh Brolin as Thanos. Even more amazing. So I thought, and then even then, he's also a force. I mean, you have... The scene when he fights Hulk, the strongest Avenger, literally beats the crap out of him. Kills Loki, stabs he Heimdall, th throws the collector in a in a in a in a uh, telephone booth. I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. What he threw it him in. 
smashes Spider-Man, almost kills Iron Man. I mean, this guy is a menace. Fights Doctor Strange and beats him with only like four Infinity Stones. Uh, crazy to me. So he's a beast, but he's also sympathetic. And well, even and and uh, even when he, he and even at the end of Infinity War, you feel sympathetic for him as he does. He did it. He won. And he, he rests and watches the sun rise on a grateful universe. And that's... And going back to what I said that... What do I think Infinity War is? I feel like Infinity War is a Thanos movie. It's the Thanos movie. Um, And then even going back to that... um, Even Thanos in Endgame... I thought... Worked. You know... He, he, I think that this one... You know, there's not really any certain story that they do interesting with him but i like the way that they showed him more as a force rather than an actual sympathetic character because we already know how thanos is now it's time to show you a different version of thanos that's a lot more powerful that what is a thanos like without the infinity gauntlet and the stones and you get to see that and he beats the crap out of captain america beats the crap out of fat thor beats the crap out of iron man i mean it is wow wow inducing and I thought that was great. So now we're gonna talk about the fan service moments. When it comes to the fan service in this movie, I feel like in these movies, I feel like, you know, of course, the, the big one that kind of comes to mind with Infinity War, Spider-Man finally gets the Iron Spider suit. A lot of people have been wanting that. Absolutely great to the fans. Um, I think the biggest uh, team, the biggest, uh, fan service moment is when Thor arrives in Wakanda with Rocket and Groot and they go ahead, ahead and attack Thanos' army and once again like I said with the score the Avengers score in the background is amazing and even in that sequence you fe it feels like a rock concert in that theater and honestly uh, that was just a great scene but the big film I would say is probably better with fan service is Avengers Endgame I mean all the callbacks to the previous films whether it's the the scene in the Avengers, or the Guardians of the Galaxy scene, or even just I could do this all day with Captain America versus Captain America, or even Captain America wielding Thor's hammer. Oh, it's so good. But even the portal sequence, man, that portal sequence. I mean, it starts out with Captain America is literally beaten. He's beaten, shield broken, hammer tossed around. Thanos brings his ops. He brings the Black Order, the Jatari, the the. Outriders, he brings every army he's got, even some Chitauri guerrillas. He's strapped, Captain America straps his shield. He's ready to go for one last round with Thanos and his 2014 army. But then he hears, on your left, on your left, Black Panther, Okoye, and Shuri walk out. Falcon flies around. Doctor Strange, the Guardians, yeah! Spider Man swings in, yeah! Uh, then you see the armies of Wakanda, then you hear the, the Wakandan chant, Yibambe! Bucky and Groot walk out. Uh, Scarlet Witch, Korg, Meek walk out. Uh, Wong, Wongers. Uh, you see Wasp. You see Pepper in her rescue suit. You see Giant Man bring down Aunt Hulk and Aunt Hulk Rocket and War Machine. Absolutely amazing. And then of course you know you got Avengers assemble as they go into war. Ah, it is. I. I I want to watch it right now. I, I might watch it after this sequence. It is the most greatest sequence ever in film history. It's just so great. I can't think of another film that can top that fan service. Uh, but yeah, that's the easily the winner for this one for fan service Endgame. Infinity War has some great fan service moments between the characters. Oh, actually, that's something I, I also want to talk about. The strange alchemy between the characters. The relationships that I thought were, worked in Infinity War were more of Tony Stark and Doctor Strange and Rocket and Thor. Everything else was more for fan service. You know, the, the Rocket and Bucky interacting, wanting the arm. Captain America and Groot interacting. Uh, uh, Build a Bear and uh, Rocket Raccoon and Iron Man. Uh, Spider Man and Star Lord interacting with Footloose, the greatest movie in history. Drax and Iron Man. Spider Man and Mantis. Um, Star Lord and Thor, um, uh, Hulk and Rocket, 
Um, oh yeah, that's another one. Uh, Iron Man and Nebula. Uh, even Spider Man and Doctor Strange, I thought was pretty good. Overall, the, the 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 chemistry between all the different characters that never interacted before was just amazing to me. So I I loved I love the fan service in these two films. But easily, Endgame wins it. And now we're gonna talk about the final part of the film of the, the of this video, and that is the theater experience. Now, obviously, like I said with the fan service, the theater experience when it comes to movies is probably the best thing. Probably the last movie I went to go see was the Super Mario Bros. movie. And I remembered a lot of kids cheering. And I was even cheering as well when I heard the music of Mario. But with this film, with these films, it's crowd inducing. Now, for some reason, if I would have to pick my favorite movie, my my favorite theater experience for these two films, I'm going to have to go with Infinity War. Now, to be clear, I think Endgame has some of the best fan service moments of all time. But fan service isn't really the best, isn't the same thing as a theater experience. Because I'm going to be honest, most of the scenes from Endgame, I spoiled myself. <laughs> I know. Yes, I saw Captain America get the hammer. I saw... The portal sequence well mo some of it i saw tony stark die i saw his funeral i saw all that i saw captain america say avengers assemble i saw all of that with infinity war the only two scenes i saw that were spoiled for me that i saw online was the hulk versus Thanos fight and thor arriving wakanda everything else i saw fresh i was surprised i was shocked even when drax was at nowhere and he was gonna go attack Thanos, i was like no 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 or even in um, some other funny scenes I thought was great. But the Infinity War theater experience was a lot more funnier. And even when Thor arrived in Wakanda, I was still cheering. Even if I saw it um, like two, two, two or twice online, I still was cheering because I loved that scene so much. Uh, so yeah, that's really the great thing. To, so to just close out this video, I re why exactly are these two films my favorite films more than anything else um it's just because marvel is my favorite i love marvel i loved it since 2016 i fell in love with it since 2016 if you know my story it started with captain america civil war and it will continue to this day continue to, to uh uh want to be a film director and all that stuff and just, just doing this and just seeing this franchise succeed with these big films as you have all these different characters interacting together and saving the universe together is so amazing so fantastic it's just great and especially when you think about from the first iron man to now so much build up i love it um and why do i love infinity war more it's just because it it explains the story a lot better whereas any of has a better story infinity war ex explores the story of that that premise a lot better endgame kind of does a little bit more bleaker but it has a it, the way you're explaining it sounds a lot better but the fan service in that in endgame is a lot better but there's a lot greater sequences and action sequences and emotion and character depth driven stories and a lot more emotion in that in infinity war that i loved more so for me i love these two films but infinity war comes on top all right so that's it thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I really enjoyed doing this first part of the series. I think the next one I'm going to do is reviewing Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man as we're reaching the anniversary for it, May 3rd. So come back Wednesday, and you're going to get a review for that. So uh, uh, all my social media stuff is in the about section over there, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.